you are exiles. We are the exiles. We are the fallen. You made the decision to go after Strange Flesh. This is about one thing. This is about us being consumed by another race. Let's get them in a host body system so we can destroy them. You're a kingdom divided. You're good and evil. You are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To rectify that situation, you got to be turned up. That's how you know that you know Jesus. And if it doesn't add up to the scriptures and it's not true, All right, guys, God bless you and welcome to This Is It, Four, three, two, one. Before the fire. Guys, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for being patient. Uh, I had an out-of-town trip I had to take, and, um, and then uh, a lot of stuff came from the trip, and I was trying to do a video for y'all tonight with a couple witnesses, because what I'm going to share with you... Uh, I don't know if I was on the other side of this camera, if I was out in the audience, <clears throat> it would be difficult for me to believe someone that was going to show me what I'm going to show you, but it'll come with proof. Uh, no different than if I said, well, the Lord told me he wanted me to look at the Vatican from a 45 degree angle on Google Earth. Well, the only way that you can actually know that that's true is that that's what I did. I came in at a 45 degree angle to the, to the Vatican building on Google earth, the part that's the upside down cross, the, the tip of the cross. And I did what the Lord said. And the result of that was that the whole Vatican turned into a serpent wearing a crown. Um, I'm going to use a couple witnesses because tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this video for you guys with a couple witnesses so you can understand what I'm going to show you is not possible it because it's so just ridiculously supernatural that there's only one way someone could be showing you what I'm showing you uh, same as the Vatican I had to hear from the creator of all things in order to see it and to understand it and there's a message woven into uh, what he wants me to share with you and I was done in front of wit a witness on the trip and uh, I'm going to use that witness because uh, he got to watch it roll out and then I'm going to use another witness that saw something uh, roll out that was just beyond impossible and that way you can got you guys can hear from witnesses and their testimonies so you don't have to just listen to some guy tell you oh this is what happened you can hear from their point of view oh no i i watched it all roll out okay now the end of the world's here um the reason why the end of the world's here is because <clears throat> there has been a spiritual takeover of the host body system. The host body system is nothing more than a shell. It's just a shell. It's a box. It's a house uh, that is occupied by an angelic source and a demonic source. For the angelic uh, source that chose to uh, exercise their free will to come into the host body system, uh, that was the forbidden fruit. And you're in it because it will destroy you eternally. And I'm trying to help you get out of the trap. It's a snare. You got caught in a snare. A snare is a trap that inverts you. It, you hit the trigger mechanism and boom, it grabs you and it inverts you and you're hanging there upside down. Um, I want, I would like very much for you guys to watch. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a trailer right now. I want you to watch it. Um, in tonight's video, I'm going to show you guys some trailers. And I'm uh, I'm going to give you guys some data out of the folders so that when we do the stuff tomorrow and then this over the next week, you guys already have the data. You've seen it with your own eyes. You've seen the explanation of it. You've seen it tied to the Bible. Because if it's not tied to the Bible, it doesn't even matter. The only thing that makes the information that the Lord has given me 
so profound and so important is because it is supported by the word of God. It is a confirming witness to the word itself. And the word itself confirms the gift. They're confirming witnesses. Okay, and that's that'll give you the confidence to face the future because this insect race that has taken over uh uh is going to be destroyed. And if you haven't been you haven't been cut free of that insect race, then you're still part of it. Um the Bible says cleanse your hearts, you double minded. The whole system is a twin system. Um, because you got caught in an insect race. That's the serpent race. Uh, you have two different minds. You have good and evil. And you have two different consciousnesses going on. And you have to be spiritually regenerated because you're, you're, you're sold. You're trapped in a host body system that's meant to destroy you. And the only way out of the trap is a spiritual regeneration where you get converted and once you get converted your eyes become single your whole body's full of light and you're sealed until the day of redemption okay and i i want you not to be here for what's coming because what's coming is the greatest war the world's ever seen the bible tells us that um all right now i've had equipment problems i've been uh, uh two new antibiotics <laughs> it's like ah, i i am literally crushed right now you guys but I wanted to get in front of you guys tonight and get you guys ready for what's coming. Okay. Okay. You ready? Uh, there's uh, the tour guide for the Vatican. There's the locust. <laughs> there's the locust on the the post of the canopy, The uh, on one of the four posts of the canopy. That is absolutely the head of a locust. Now I want you guys to listen to this ancient alien clip and then we're going to pay very, very close attention. Um, if you would, please. Pay very close attention to what they're saying in the intro, and then uh, pay very close attention to what they're showing you on the screen. So make sure as you watch this little trailer, you know, just don't kind of half watch it. I mean, intently watch it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play the same trailer again, but what we've done is substituted images from the folders. So like the Vatican, the largest altar in the world is a big insect harvesting semen. That's weird. And we have folders that are packed with insect related uh, agendas of destroying sheep. So here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's just get it going, guys. All okay, right. I love you in Christ. I'm glad I'm back in front of you guys. It's been a really, uh, really tough last four days. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Legends of Ant-Man. They have antenna. They have elongated skulls. Beetles buried with Egyptian mummies. The scarab was critical for the resurrection. And swarms of locusts targeting humans. It's almost as if the locusts themselves were programmed. In cultures throughout the world, insects have been worshipped, feared, and even thought of as gods. But might these strange creatures that have inhabited Earth for hundreds of millions of years provide a link to extraterrestrial beings? The idea that insect aliens are coming here to this planet, interacting with humans, may well be based on something real. Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. What if it were true? Did ancient aliens really help to shape our history? And if so, is there a connection between aliens and insects? All right, hopefully uh, uh, you were paying very close attention to the audio and to the visuals on that. Now I'm going to uh, replay it, but we've taken some of the revelation that the Lord God's given me largest altar in the world is an insect harvesting semen. Why? Um, in the Vatican, the list of popes prominently displayed showing the names of every pope, every leader of that organization called the Catholic Church. By the way, Catholic is katholikos in Greek. It means holy and completely down completely down kata 
Holy Ghost. That's what Catholic means, completely down. Um, watch this. Now pay very close attention to this because this is an edited version. Now watch. I'm trying to help everybody's minds open up a little bit. Here we go. Legends of Ant-Man. They have antenna. They have elongated skulls. Beetles buried with Egyptian mummies. The scarab was critical for the resurrection. And swarms of locusts targeting humans. It's almost as if the locusts themselves were programmed. In cultures throughout the world, insects have been worshipped, feared, and even thought of as gods. But might these strange creatures that have inhabited Earth for hundreds of millions of years provide a link to extraterrestrial beings? The idea that insect aliens are coming here to this planet, interacting with humans, may well be based on something real. Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. What if it were true? Did ancient aliens really help to shape our history? And if so, is there a connection between aliens and insects? Okay, now if you would bear with me, I'm going to play you the same trailer again. And all we've done is add some other pictures from the folders. Uh, let me remind you in the folders, just a couple things you may have. Do, I'm just going to refresh your memory, maybe. Uh, let's see. Well, here's one of the images from the uh, the trailer you just saw. They're right here in front of you. This is what the trailer starts with right here. That's the beginning of the trailer. Um, I want to remind you some stuff that's in our folders. Uh, here's this girl with a tattoo of a beetle, like a scarab. But it's also a rudimentary image of a female vagina. And here are also rudimentary images right here of a female vagina. And then when she opens her arm, then it it turns into a, a flying insect. Let me show you right here real quick. Just So here it is. So here it is. But then when she turns her arm and opens it, it spreads its wings and is able to fly because the human host body is a system used to breed insects. Who's the king of the, who's the king of the bottomless pit, the angel of the abyss? Satan, Apollyon. And he's the king of who? It said Revelation 9 verse 11 says they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is Apollyon. Well, who is who is they had a king over them? The locust from the pit. That's why there's locusts on the four corners of the Vatican. Again, uh, of the of the canopy inside the Vatican. That's why they're worshiping right there in front of a giant dead sheep made up of a bunch of angels because the serpent race is killing the angels that are coming into the building, into the body, the box. Because the host body system is really an external abdomen used as a source of the fetus, which is mentioned in Genesis. And I'll say it again, the human host body, the and the serpent, the serpent's use of it, um, people don't understand that in Genesis 1, Parthenogenesis created, let us create man in our image. The word image is salam, and it means a representative figure, especially an idol. See, angels aren't supposed to participate in idolatry, but the host body system and the creation of it is an idol. Let us create man in our image. So it was critical to understand that the word God right here and Elohim, it's not the Lord God, it's Elohim, said, let us make man in our image. The word right here, image, I'll click on it, 6754, 6754 image. It means to shade, which means to make darker, a phantom. That is an illusion. A resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. So the creation of the host body system right here in Genesis 1, verse 26, 
is the creation of an idol. It says it right here, especially an idol. And it also is an illusion. So the host body system is an illusion. It's an idol. And I'm, I'm showing you, I'm going to be able to show you and absolutely prove it that the host body system is an external abdomen as a source of the fetus for a reptilian race, the serpent race. They use the body in order to breed their race by trapping angels in it. Now we know the whole mystery of everything. And it's easy to prove now. I'll be able to show it to you easily. Okay, so let me go to Genesis 3 because I want to show you this. When it says, it says, and the serpent, and it says a snake from its hiss. Uh, and it, the word is nakash, and it means to whisper a magic spell. See it? To whisper a magic spell. Remember in uh, uh, King Arthur, where they do the ana, knock, knock, whatever, and they're, they breathe the dragon spell? To disguise her appearance so she can sleep with her brother and and get his blood uh, his bloodline in her for uh, that race. Uh, it's just a manifestation of the what happened in Genesis one. So here we go. What is this thou has done? And the woman said, "The serpent beguiled me to lead astray, to mentally delude." to seduce. And then it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle and every beast of the field, and upon thy belly thou shalt go. It's very important to see what thou shalt go means. It means to carry on your mode of life, to walk in a great variety of applications, literally and figuratively, to pace, behave self, to be conversant. Okay, so you shall go, you know, go and do whatever it is you do. But upon thy belly, belly, it says the external abdomen, the belly as a source of the fetus. Now, the reason this has come up now is because the, the way the Lord does things is he knows I couldn't, I couldn't bear to know this for the last 10 years. I would lose my mind. Uh, I just, it's too much to bear. When you look at the human race and you realize that the human race is literally a shell for birthing a, a serpent race and a consciousness. And it's really the grandest illusion of all. It's a little too much. Uh, and being the messenger and the point man for this information, I am really glad that he didn't give this to me until this close to the end. So anyway, so upon thy belly, the external abdomen as a source of the fetus. Now we're going to get it. We're going to get into that. So here is, this girl, uh, you know, manifesting a serpent tattoo. Um, just also the odds of an insect's mouth right there, an insect's mouth, that those are called labium. Uh, so which came first, the, the name for uh, female genitalia, labium, or labia, or the insect's mouth? Which one was it? Um, but for them to match... Uh, is just absolutely insane. And we'll get to more of that later, but let me stay on task here. Let's watch the next, let's watch the next uh, clip. So again, this is Ancient Aliens clip, but we've edited it using images from the folder. Okay, here we go again. Legends of Ant-Man. They have antenna, they have elongated skulls. Beetles buried with Egyptian mummies. The scarab was critical for the resurrection. And swarms of locusts targeting humans. It's almost as if the locusts themselves were programmed. In cultures throughout the world, insects have been worshipped, feared, and even thought of as gods. But might these strange creatures that have inhabited Earth for hundreds of millions of years provide a link? to extraterrestrial beings. The idea that insect aliens are coming here to this planet, interacting with humans, may well be based on something real. I want to pause it. Now just stop and think about what you're looking at. May sh well, it's based on something that is real. It is the whole story. Why do you think Satan is the king of the insects? I mean, 
Satan is the king of the locusts from the pit. That's why the Twin Towers were destroyed. The Twin Towers represent the twin system. The angel that comes in and is in the trap alongside the demon that's within the host body system. Two consciousnesses cleanse your heart, you double-minded, good and evil. And that's why the crosses at Calvary where Jesus was crucified, it represents your condition. There's a good you and there's a bad you. That represents Jismus and Desmus, the two thieves that lay bound with Barabbas in insurrection. You understand? So the crosses of Calvary represent you. The three crosses represent your condition. But if you let Jesus take the cross for you in the middle, then you, that replaces him on that cross for the punishment instead of you. That's what the three crosses are all about. They don't want you to know the truth. They'll put you in religion. They'll feed you everything in the world. You, they don't care. You can want, do whatever you want as long as they don't want you to know the truth. Now, here's the thing. Did y'all know that Akhenaten is like the one pharaoh that they tried to destroy all, uh, you know, all information? Everything Akhenaten was scrubbed from history. Almost everything. But see this hieroglyph? Isn't it fascinating? That the first real work the Lord had me do was draw in the hieroglyph of Akhenaten. Because within the hieroglyph of Akhenaten is hidden the entire mystery of the human race. Well, it would be smart if you didn't want anyone to know the truth to scrub any uh, evidence of it. That's what they were. They were scrubbing evidence of it. and they, But they'll tell you, oh, you know, it's because... Uh, you know, they were all against Akhenaten. No, it was a way to hide the truth from everybody. Uh, here is Lady Gaga impersonator in a DeAntford video. Why would you have someone birthing a locust? Something real. Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. Now, I want to pause it there again while you're listening. Uh, see, the thing is, Everything's so backwards and upside down, you would never consider that you're the foreigner in their turf. Live out your life as sojourners, exiles, foreigners. So if you're an exile from heaven and you're in their turf, it's their turf and their consciousness, of course, knows what's going on by default because it's their turf. So you're in their system. They don't have to do anything to destroy you. You're in their system. You will be destroyed no matter what, period, because you're in their flesh system. So all they have to do is, once you're here, have fun. They, they don't have to do anything. That's why it's almost impossible to find them out. But again, the Lord gave me such an insanely mind-boggling gift that he's allowed me to see through the veil and I can draw in their agendas. And those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Now, here's where the Bible comes in to make sense of all this. Let's, let's, I want you to see right here on this um, clip right here. This is that guy, John, on the, on the 2020 interview uh, or 60 minutes or 2020, whatever it was. And he was under hypnosis and it said, who are you? And he says, Elohim. He said, we're the original makers. Well. Uh, if you go to the Bible and you go to Genesis 1, it says in the beginning, Elohim, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now, think of it as a system and, and let your mind just get outside whatever pre-indoctrination you have and just look at all the data and all the facts. Now, watch this. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters in this. There was darkness upon the face of the deep. Let's just look at that. An abyss. And the spirit of Elohim, the spirit of Elohim, the Ruach Elohim, moved upon the face as the part that turns of the waters. And it says, figuratively jute by euphemism, urine and semen. Well, why? let me ask you a question. Why would the largest alternator in the world be a big bug harvesting semen? Why? Huh. And again, when you go down here and you look at the reality that Elohim created man in his own image, Elohim. 
Now, let me ask you guys one question. What spirit was upon Jesus? What spirit was upon Jesus? Jesus said the spirit, uh, he read from the book of Isaiah, in Luke chapter 4, I believe, and he was quoting, I believe, Isaiah chapter 61 or 60. We can go look right now. I got a whole lot of scriptures in my head. So let's go to Isaiah and we'll start at Isaiah 60. We'll go to 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now we're talking about Jesus here. So in order for Genesis 1 to be the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost, which all these liars in the churches have lied to their congregations. But the Lord made me just salty enough not to put up with their bullshit. It would have to be the same thing here. So Jesus is the spirit that can free your soul, pay for your debts. That's the only one that can do it because he's the head politically. He's the chief politically. El, the almighty God, is the head of all things. El, the almighty God, in the flesh is called, with us is El, Emmanuel. With us is Imanu, El, the Almighty God. Now watch. So in order for Genesis 1 to be what all the churches have lied to everybody and told them, it would have to be, no matter what, this word right here, the Spirit, what's it say? 7307, I'll highlight it. 7307, it's Ruach. The Ruach breath, the breath of the Lord God is upon me. See the word God right here? Let's look at the word Lord first. It's Adonai, and that just means the Lord as a proper name of God only. So Adonai, I'm going to click on the root of it. It means to rule. That is controller, sovereign, sovereign controller right here. I'll just highlight that. So the word Adonai, the Lord right here, the word Lord right here is Hebrew word 136. It's not uh, Jehovah like you'll see it sometimes, but watch this. So the Lord God, ready? Look at the word God. It's Jehovah right here. See, Yehovah, which is Jehovah. They just, for syntax, the Yehovah. The self-existent or eternal Yehovah, Yehovah, the spirit of the self-existent eternal Jehovah is upon me because the self-existent eternal Jehovah hath anointed me. So there's only one spirit that Jesus claims is in him. He is the in the within the system the self existent eternal Yehovah. Yes or no? It says it right here. The spirit of the Adonai Yehovah is upon me because Yehovah hath anointed me. Now let's go back to Genesis one. Now I'm going to destroy every line preacher in the world. John Hagee, all you guys, you got some really big problems. Uh, CBC, all these churches that I've seen in San Antonio, I've gone to and told them, ready? What does it say right here? In the beginning, Elohim. See the word right here? Elohim, right here, Elohim. That is not the self-existent eternal Jehovah. That's many in one, many of the many in one, uh, cumulative sum. This, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face, as the part that turns, of the abyss. And the spirit, okay, pay attention, the spirit. There it is, Ruach, see it? The Ruach Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. A euphemism semen. So is that, yes or no, is that the eternal spirit that can save you? The spirit of Elohim, yes or no? And the answer is absolutely not. Because in Genesis 2 is where you see the Lord God's man, Christ, uh, Christ's representative in the system, 
It says, and the Lord God formed his man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Lord God, self-existent, eternal Jehovah. So, see, Genesis 1 is what needs to be fixed. Because Genesis 1 was making a box, which is idolatry. And Elohim said, let us make a box man in our idolatrous image right there. There it is. Okay, so now I've used pragmatic teaching. I've used the word of God. I haven't added anything. haven't subtracted anything. But the Lord allowed me to be an end-time harbinger. And without getting into like any of the details on what I'm going to be showing you in upcoming videos, which I'm going to use these witnesses for, the Lord revealed some stuff to me about just myself and my identity and even my combination of, you know, the night I got saved, what was going on. It's so far beyond the human brain, you couldn't even think of it. So anyway, okay, let's keep going. You ready? So now let's go back. So if we go back to Isaiah 61, the spirit, the Ruach, right there, the Ruach, the breath, Okay, the spirit of the Adonai Yehovah is upon me because Yehovah has anointed me, anointed to consecrate. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Here's a good, I want you to see the word captives just very quickly. The word captives means to transport into captivity, to carry away, lead away, lead astray, make captive. That's what happened to all of y'all that are here. You were led away captive. He has brought me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Okay, so you're one of the captives. I'm one of the captives. Well, what were we, cap where did we get taken from? Heaven, we're angels. Where else? Is there any other place you could have been taken from? You see how simple it really is? It's so stupid obvious once you know the truth. And the only way to know the truth is to invert the world to see the truth. Because there's two sides of the coin. If I show you an image of the virgin, and you never knew that the image of the virgin was also a dead sheep, you only saw half the equation. You only saw the image of the virgin was the virgin. But when you turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. Now you've seen the whole story instead of only half the story. To show that you've gotten out of your trap, you've turned the virgin the other way and you've seen it as a dead sheep. Now you're seeing things as they truly are. There's two sides to it. You understand? It's very simple. It's very paradoxical. So he has, he has sent me to bind up the broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives. Y'all were transported into captivity. That's why there's angels coming into the mouth of the serpent. And the opening of prisons, ready? The opening of prisons redoubled. It says to redouble because, ready? Cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. Well, so if you're of two minds and you get turned up, you get redoubled. Your eyes become single and you become whole again. You're made whole again. He will restore you to health. Being restored to health means you've been made whole again. Uh, I'll show you that in Jeremiah 30. Okay. To proclaim liberty to the cows in the opening of prisons. To redouble the opening of a dungeon. Salvation from sin. There it is. No one can argue with it because it says the opening of your prison is the redoubling of your eyes. And it means you are free from sin right there. I'm going to click on the root of the word right here. And it says to open the senses, especially the eyes. So the opening of the prison. Well, let me ask you a question. If your eyes are redoubled, then what's the prison? Where are your eyes? Um, in my body? <laughs> yes. See, your, your body's the prison. That was provided by the serpent race parthenogenesis that's why the vatican's a serpent that's why it's birthing another serpent 
audience hall, a serpent right alongside. Okay, now, the opening of the prison to them that are bound to yoke or to hitch, to fashion, in any sense, to join in battle. Now, watch this. Let's go back to Genesis 2. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them. So Genesis 1 was making the heavens and the earth and the host of them. That's what Genesis 1. A mass of persons, especially regularly organized for war, an army, a battle. Right there. See it? So see, Genesis 2, at the beginning of Genesis 2, in verses Genesis 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2, 3, you can see that the creation of the host body system was getting a group ready for battle. Against who? The angels that get trapped in the system and the battles inside of you. But if you don't turn back to the Lord God, you will be eternally destroyed. So now it's been proven right in front of your face using the word of God. So no one can argue with me. And I'm, when I say me, I come up against a lot of people that say, click here, false prophet. God have mercy on you. Now you blasphemed the spiritual being that is giving me this information. Because if you're saying that I'm a false prophet and all the information I just gave you is biblical, and I showed you that the Vatican is really a snake wearing a crown, that's a very supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. So now you've spoken evil of the Holy Spirit working through me. So now you get to, now you've committed the unforgivable sin. It will not be forgiven in this world or the next. It's like you're done. So enjoy your eternal suffering. That's why I tell people, call me any other name. Call me the filthiest name you can think of. Just whatever. Don't say false prophet. Because I don't want you to lock yourself into a no way out situation. Because even though you hate me, I don't, I don't want you to have to deal with what, you know, what, the ramifications of that would be. So here it is. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and the, and the host. See the word host? A mass of persons or figurative things regularly organized for war and army, battle, company host, soldiers. Okay, so there it is. Now let's go back. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 30 real quick. I want to show you something. Talking about Jacob's trouble, I'm going to show you two scriptures here real quick. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it, is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, remember, Jacob's the younger twin. And look at this. Trouble means female rival. Tribulation. There it is. But he shall be saved. Watch this. Yasha. To open wide or set free. He shall be saved out of it. Okay, now watch this. So the Lord's talking about, and he said, Therefore all they that devoured thee. So you know how you know how I show you guys the clothing lines 400 with 400 which is hunted for dinner and all that stuff where it's sheep being eaten by serpents and insects and all this crap. Well, let me show you what's coming for them. Okay, watch. Therefore, all that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil and all they that prey upon thee, I will give for prey. For I will restore. Now, here you go. Ready? I will restore uh, to ascend, to mount up, cause to ascend up. So, while the pit is coming up, taking over the host body system, those of us that are in the host body system that have been converted, we will go up. They'll come up from the pit and take over the host body system, but we will go up, those of us that have been converted. Now watch. I will restore health unto thee. Watch. I will restore health. Look at the word health. In the sense of restoring to soundness, wholeness. To prolong. Okay, here we go. So 
the way I told you, we're caught in a snare, which is a trap that inverts you. It says, but this is a people, talking about us, robbed to plunder, to take as a prey. So see, th this is what they're doing to us. Robbed and spoiled and spoiled to destroy. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Prison houses, I'm going to show you the root of it. In the sense of separation, two heterogeneities, diverse seeds. That's not arguable. That's the serpent race and the sheep race combined within one system, one host body. Two different seeds within the host body system. The seed, a demonic seed and an angelic seed within the host body system. There it is right there. It's not arguable. That's why the Vatican has angels coming in, melting into semen, a seed. That's why the big bug is harvesting the angels. And that's that little crown on top, that which is the crown coming out of the tip of the penis. That's the seed that the insect is harvesting. The angels, the angelic seed. That's why it's there. So they are hid in prison houses. So in the sense of separation, because we got separated from our creator, two heterogeneities and houses is by a, uh, a dungeon, a house. And they are a prey and none delivered them. But here's the part people just don't want to get to or admit. You have to realize you sinned against the Lord God. Why else would you be in under condemnation? Why? You think a just creator would make you under condemnation just for being around? You know, it's like you're born and now you got to go to hell. Does that make any sense? But if the host body system is the forbidden fruit, then it makes total sense because you chose it. And we all have free will, and that's what it says. And I'll show I'll show that to you in Exodus 20 as well, but watch. So, who gave Jacob for a spoil? So, Jacob is the younger twin. And that's us. That represents us. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways. Neither were they obedient to his law, nor therefore he hath put upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. The strength of battle in the sense of fighting a battle. So, let me show you what the battle is. To feed on, to consume, destruction, to devour. So, we're trapped in a battle where another source is trying to consume us from the inside. There it all is. Hunted for dinner, just like the clothing line. All the stuff I show you, all the stuff in the folders is wrapped up in these scriptures. That's why it's, that's why it, what makes it so profound. Okay, now I'm just going to pause it for a sec. Now that I've given you some scriptures so you can hold on to those. Now let's go back and watch the trailer again, but another one, another version of it. Ready? I'll, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I hadn't finished this one yet. Let's watch this one all the way through. It'll just take like one and a half minutes, I think. And then I'll play the next one without talking. You're like, oh, right. <laughs> it's impossible. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Legends of Ant-Man. They have antenna. They have elongated skulls. Beetles buried with Egyptian mummies. The scarab was critical for the resurrection and swarms of locusts targeting humans. It's almost as if the locusts themselves were programmed. In cultures throughout the world, insects have been worshipped, feared, and even thought of as gods. But might these strange creatures that have inhabited Earth for hundreds of millions of years provide a link to extraterrestrial beings? The idea that insect aliens are coming here to this planet, interacting with humans, may well be based on something real. I know I said I wasn't going to talk. <laughs> may sh well be based on something real. How about it's their planet and we're angelic beings from heaven 
and coming into their system, we get trapped. See, they got it kind of upside down and backwards. Just want to make sure I made the point right here. Ready? Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. What if it were true? Did ancient aliens really help to shape our history? And if so, is there a connection between aliens and insects? Uh, you tell me. So y'all remember the, the 2020 interview with this guy, John, right? We're the original makers. Elohim said, who are you? Elohim, the original makers. Uh, is it possible an insect race influenced our race? Gee, I wonder. Let me see. Ancient aliens. Really uh, I don't know. Maybe. Really helped to shape. <laughs> okay. Here's Akhenaten, the, the, the kid right here. So here's the, the child that's the head. This is the head of the kid that Akhenaten's holding. Well, the whole thing is a dead sheep, but there's a serpent. There's a serpent being or a reptilian that lays right on top of the dead sheep. Here is a really uh, uh, amazing picture someone drew uh, of a. Uh, he sent me four pictures. Uh, anyway, without getting into the whole thing, uh, he sent some very unique pictures, and I thought, wow, there you go. You see the the reptile, same as this, and then the baby. That would be the same as the sheep, and we put. I took that and I put that from his painting right in the head of the kid that Akhenaten's holding. Let me show you. Our history. Okay, so this is the painting that uh, he sent. It's really a phenomenal painting uh, because of what it encapsulates. Uh, the human host body is the external abdomen of the serpent race, the source of the fetus. And they are breeding a consciousness within the head. So you see this right here? I took, I took this put it right here, which is the head of the child that Akhenaten's holding. Now, I want you to look at this for one moment. This is this Egyptian hieroglyph stuff. Look at this. Look at the double down elbows. See the double down elbows? Double down. And see these? Like chrysalises of angels that have died, and then they're hatching locusts. See it? Look at that. That's their system. Now, we're going to watch one more intro where I mean one more um, trailer that we we edited and I want you to watch this. Here we go. OK, so here's the next trailer. Now it starts with the this is the list of popes in the Vatican. And right here, look at the guy in the slave collar right here. Look how evil that is. Let me ask you a question. If you walked into a church and you saw that, would you stay? I'd be like, Ugh. <laughs> that's in the Vatican. That there, what, what does that look like? There's something wholesome or good about it. Look at this. That is a guy in total turmoil, and you can see the fetus right here, and see the fetus right here. See two different fetuses right here. But this guy, when you turn him upside down, turns into a locust coming out of the pit. So here's their agenda: get them in a slave collar. And here's the big slave collar that turns into the beast. Get them in the slave collar, the beast system, and then destroy them through a twin system. Now, watch this. By the way, these are serpents. That's the head of a serpent. That's the body of a serpent. But they also become claws like for an insect. Okay, ready? Let's watch. Let's do this. Okay, y'all ready? Let's do it. Legends of Ant-Man. They have antenna. They have elongated skulls. Beetles buried with Egyptian mummies. The scarab was critical for the resurrection. And swarms of locusts targeting humans. I want to pause it right there. So I want you to look right here. This is the Church of Satan right here. Upside down cross, upside down cross. Look at the Vatican. When you walk under the canopy, look at the two upside down crosses showing that this is who they serve. They serve Satan. That's all there is to it. They serve Apollyon. Okay, there it is. Right there in the Catholic Church. Right under the canopy. Because, see, the canopy, the, the, whole, the whole idea, the word canopy that uh, in Ezekiel and in Isaiah, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. The word covereth means canopy, 
host body, flesh. Lucifer is the host, uh, is the the flesh, the host body. He owns it. The anointed cherub that covereth canopy. So see, they worship Lucifer. You have the the canopy right there in the middle of the Vatican. What's going on on the canopy? Well, in the corners, you got locusts coming up from the pit. You got the female rival wearing a bonnet that's a dragon. The whole thing is a dragon with its mouth open. It's a no-brainer. I mean, the Lord let me draw it all in. It's right there. They're busted. There's no hiding from the Lord. So the Lord used me as a conduit to expose all their stuff. So now they're completely busted according to the word of God. Not these people on YouTube that, oh, the Lord told me this and told me that. But they they haven't been converted or inverted. See, all these people that say they're speaking for the Lord, how could you speak for the Lord if you haven't been converted? And by the word converted, it means inverted, turned quite around. That's what the word converted means. So how could you be speaking for the Lord without being converted? It's impossible. It's crazy. So be careful out there, guys. Okay, but but look right here. Just look at the reality of these posts. This is the canopy right here. And on these big posts are locusts. Like here's a, you can see the semi-faded locust right here. There's locusts on these posts. I mean, you got to be kidding. And look at the big dead sheep of all the angels. The angels are what supply the locusts. These angels coming in through the window, the big dead sheep are what supply the food for the locusts. Or what? Actually, every angel has his own worm, which is a locust. So when you die, you go straight to where you, you're being fed off of your whole life. And that cumulative sum is owned by the angel of the abyss. And the angel of the abyss is Satan, and he's the king of the locust. Says it right there in Revelation 9, verse 11. There it is. There it is. And swarms of locusts targeting humans. It's almost as if the locusts themselves were programmed. In cultures throughout the world, insects have been worshipped, feared, and even thought of as gods. But might these strange creatures that have inhabited Earth for hundreds of millions of years provide a link to extraterrestrial beings? The idea that insect aliens are coming here to this planet, interacting with humans, may well be based on something real. <laughs> it may well be based on something real. It is the whole story, brah. <laughs> it's like, it will maybe. Hey, Lady Gaga, I like your dress. That's cool. Where'd you get it? Uh, my insect tailor made it for me. Why do you ask? How about Ezekiel 13? I'm against, thus saith the Lord God. I am against you women who hunt the souls of men to make your pillows fly. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, I wonder what that means. <laughs> so stupid. I mean, it's so obvious. Uh, there you go. Why does the ceiling of the Vatican have a bunch of cells on the top like a wasp nest? See them all? You see how they put the lights inside the recessed uh, octagon? See it? See the lights in the middle? Representing you, your light being used. That's why the light is in here. They put the light in the inside this octagon, representing the light of an angel that's trapped in one of these in the pit. Interacting with humans may well be based on some. That's why Zach put those little pillows on top, like a wasp nest. I'm against you women who hunt the souls of men to make your pillows, because what's in there, one of God's light beings, is trapped. With his own worm feeding off him. Based on something real. Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. What if it were true? Did ancient aliens really help to shape our history? And if so, is there a connection between aliens and insects? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Is it, is it possible? It's not possible. It's the only thing that makes any sense because that's what the Bible even says. All right. Okay, guys. I love you in Christ. Again, thanks for uh, 
bearing with me. Like I said, I just I went through a a four day just. Uh, but it it was all good. The Lord used the whole trip to give me a phenomenal end time message to give to you. I'm going to have witnesses to share their, uh, you know, the, being witnesses to things that are not possible. That way it will help you believe what I'm going to share with you right here. And uh, the reality that now that uh, we've had a presidential election here in the United States and that Trump won the presidency and the House and the Senate have been flipped uh, that means all the conspirators and co-conspirators, they're all sitting around plotting probably the most evil stuff you can even imagine right now because uh, they'll pull the trigger and they'll do anything not to have to pay for their crimes, these people that are all guilty. Anyway, so we'll talk about that later. All right. I love you guys in Christ. Oh, my goodness. How about a giant bear hug? Uh, Hat flew off. Thanks for the t-shirt. Uh, I like to give the bear a hug because I try and think about you guys. I know that a lot of times we don't get a hug. It, sometimes, you know, your kids leave home, whatever. Uh, everybody's situation may be different, but I know it can get kind of lonely out in the world. So I'm going to give you a hug from Johnny. I love you in Christ. Okay. Grab your pillow. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay if you're converted. If you're not converted, it's not going to be okay. It's, it's going to be very bad. Anyway, I'm trying to help you get converted to give your life to Christ. Let Christ take full residency in, inside of you. Kick the demon out. Take over your temple. Surrender your temple to the Lord. All right. Love you guys in Christ.